So, is, uh, thanks a lot, Peter. Um, has everyone got my first screen of the presentation? I hope so. Um, so, yeah, my name's Mark Whittle. I'm from Hammer Metals. Um, I'm here to discuss the Mount Oz project uh, in particular. And also, we have another project in Western Australia, but we'll mainly be talking about the Oz project. So just for the legal-minded, I've got a disclaimer here. I will be making forward-looking statements. So Hammer Metals has got uh, two main projects, the Isaac Project and the Bronswing uh, uh, South Project. So basically, we, uh, we're positioned really well in gold and copper. Uh, in the Isaac Project, we're um, building a... Uh, copper inventory. Uh, we've got a number of jewel resources in the Isaac project. Uh, we have a good team uh, with uh, Ziggy Lubaniki, Russell Davis, and Dan Thomas as the managing director. And in both uh, project areas, we're close to world class mines. So that's a picture in the background of the uh, Trafalgar prospect. And this is a nice picture from uh, Western Australia. Uh, in the background, in the top right corner there, you can see the, uh, the bronze wing uh, over there and done. And our uh, timbered area goes right up to the boundary of the mining ways. So just touching on the directors, uh, Russell Davis, the chairman, Dan Thomas, managing director, Sigi Lubaniki, non exec director. Uh, those three people have a wealth of experience in the resources sector. Uh, Russell and Ziggy um, have got previous uh, success uh, in Gold Road with the discovery of the Gruyere Gold Deposit. And that's just uh, a snapshot there of the number of shares on the ship. Uh, this is a nice photo of one of the many prospects we have in the eyes of blocks, uh, prospects called Scalper. And so in terms of the, what I'm going to be talking about today, as I said before, we'll be focusing on the Mount Isa block. We'll just do a bit uh, of project overview, talk about our joint venture partners, uh, our general exploration strategy. Then we'll look at a few prospects in the northern target zone or northern pump, Trafalgar, Copney, Black Rock and Lakeview. And then we'll talk about the southern target zone, um, specifically Shadow and Calm. So in terms of our project area, for people who don't know where we are, we've got uh, Mount Isa on the western side here, Moncari on the eastern side. So basically we're in a, a Mary Kathleen fold belt. Um, we've been accumulating tenements there for quite a few years now. So currently we have about uh, 2,100 square kilometres and all of the prospects uh, we have are prospective for both uh, copper and gold. I've got joint ventures uh, with uh, Glencore, Jogmec, and Kibiri Resources, uh, Proprietary Limited. Um, the Jogmec JV covers about 300 square kilometres. And we've got an ongoing drilling program. So currently the rig's on site, and we're drilling uh, a number of targets, mostly in the, the northern hub. So I just threw in this photo here. This is the Pilgrim Fault Zone uh, to, the, to the south. On the horizon, we've got uh, Phosphate Hill, and Tick Hill deposit. So in a number of uh, locations throughout the project area, the Pilgrim Fault um, is evidenced by quite uh, high silica uh, scarps. Uh, it just gives you some idea about the amount of fluids that have been moving through the area over time. So the JVs, we've got three JVs in place. It covers about 20% uh, of our project area. Uh, the Glencore uh, JV, that's in the Mount, or otherwise known as the Mount Frosty JV, that's in the north project area. 
I've got the Jogmak Mount Isa East joint venture. Uh, that's composed of four areas, uh, the Melbourne area over in the east, Johnfield area, and the core of the project area, and then the uh, Mount Thorpe and even Stevens uh, areas. And we've also got a JV with uh, Kibiri, Brighton Limited. It's termed Johnfield JV, and that's present in the southeast of the project area. This is another nice photo here. Of, uh, we've got the Mount Phil Pen type deposit in the foreground. In the background, we have the Mount Phil Breccia complex over in this area. And just in front of that, you might be able to see a, a creek system there with a white precipitate in it. Uh, that's the uh, shadow prospect. So in terms of the Jogmac JV, um, we've been quite active last year and so far this year. Um, we've got a, a project scale reinterpretation of the geology by PGN consultants. On all areas, we've been conducting gravity and uh, extensive uh, soil geochemical sampling. I've also conducted uh, ground EM and down hole EM at Toby, uh, drilling at Trafalgar and Shadow. And yeah, based on the 2020 results, uh, Jogmec uh, decided to go out to tender, and uh, that process is currently ongoing. So, in terms of our exploration strategy, we're really um, out to discover ISCG and ISCG uh, mineralization styles in terms of OCG exploration where are we concentrating our efforts? We've got pretty much three main target zones. The northern target zone, which is in this area here, which is an ISCG corridor. And that's probably a 16-kilometre trend in this area. And we've got the uh, Neptune, Mountain View and Blackrock prospects located on that trend. But we also see similar geological settings to the south in the Tickhill area. I've got the Mount Philp Breccia target, which is located in the core of the project area. So that's over in this portion of the second slide. And so I've been looking within the Mount Philp Breccia area and around the margins of it. And that resulted in the discovery of the shadow trend and also the Toby prospect. Got another. ISC drinks, CG trend here, the uh, Overlander Scalper trend. So that's got three alteration systems within it, Overlander, Andy's Hill and Scalper. Uh, all of them are mineralised and all have uh, elevated light rare earth content. And then we've got the Kalman, Kalman Western Hammertown target, which is located in this area here. And so within that area, we've got the Kalman deposit, but we've also got uh, the uh, Hamilton prospect and the Kalman West prospect. So Hamilton especially has got quite thick intersections of low-grade material. Um, we've been working on that for a number of years, trying to find uh, areas of concentration within it. And we've also got outlying targets at uh, Dronfield, which is in this area here, and Melbourne over to the east. So both of those areas are located or are related to the northern margin of the Wimbury granite, and they all have ISCG alteration systems um, associated with structural linkages off the granite. So back to the northern target zone. Um, in this area, we do have an ISCG trend, so it's a 14 kilometre long trend, which includes the Trafalgar prospect, Pearl in this area here, Lakeside and Lakeview prospects in this area here, going north to the Lane deposit, Jubilee deposit, and then the trend continues on the western side of the Mary Kathleen deposit. And also up in this area, uh, we've got the Coppany 
uh, rare earth element uh, scan. So that's located on the eastern side of the Mary Kathleen deposits, deposit. So this is an oblique view of the northern hub. So there's the Western ISCG trend going up through Lady Rose, which we've just finished drilling out, and up towards Black Rock, which is 16 kilometres away to the north. And the ISCG trend, Trafalgar is here, Springs, Pearl, Lakeview and Lakeside Prospects, up through Elaine to Jubilee. And that's a 14 kilometre trend. <clears throat> so just a bit of text about those trends. So the Eastern Trend, Trafalgar, the Springs Pearl. Also got Smoko, Gossam and Lakeside Prospects on that trend. Going north, the Elaine Deposit, then Jubilee deposit. Jubilee is located in the Mount Frosty JV. And then we look at the western trend, which is this trend here. So that's 16 kilometres through the Neptune group of prospects going up to Mount Muir and Black Rock in the background. And Black Rock area, we're looking to be drilling that in 2021, probably later this year. So that's a, a oblique view of the um, Trafalgar prospect. Uh, there's a lot of dirt being moved around there on the surface, uh, although not much mined. And here's the drilling rig um, from late last year in the foreground. So our initial drilling uh, identified significant golden copper mineralisation. Uh, up till this point, we've uh, drilled four holes, and all of those holes have uh, peripheral magnetite alteration and elevated light rays. So we're planning to do further drilling in 2021, and in fact, the, the rig's on site now. So the deposit's uh, quite interesting. It's on a um, fairly well-defined trend. That's the uh, RTP magnetics. So that's uh, undoubtedly related to the magnetite alteration. We've also got sympathetic distribution of copper and gold in soil. Um, the whole trend has not been uh, soil sampled at this point. Uh, the blue outline there shows the extent of the soil sampling. So we're hoping uh, in the next phase of joint venture work, we'll be looking at uh, that trend in detail on strike from Trafalgar. So that just shows some of the intersections from the drilling. Um, 60 metres at 1.04% copper is uh, an excellent result uh, from the second hole uh, drilled into this prospect. And the photo at the bottom shows uh, some of the um, oxide uh, mineralisation that's just lying around all over the place in the overburden dumps. So this, this uh, second area I want to talk about in the northern uh, hub is called Black Rock. And I've got uh, an oblique view there um, that's looking uh, southeast. So on the eastern side of this uh, trend, we've got the uh, Black Rock Pinnacle Zone, which is basically this entire hill. It's quartzite. On the western side of this trend, we have the uh, Sunset Zone. So the Black Rock uh, Pinnacle Zone, that's quite, quite uh, I think, thick intersections of low-grade copper mineralisation. It's by no means extensively drill tested. Uh, there's definite uh, upside for hammer uh, in this area. The sunset trend uh, on the western side has got more of a Cardinal dissociation. Um, the, just where I've got my... Person now, there's uh, a small open pit in that area that was mined for calcite. So that area has got uh, a few more holes into it, but again, there's uh, 
lot of upside and potential for Hammer to define a resource uh, in the short term. So both of those prospects are located on the uh, northern side of the Cameron Fault. Um, the Cameron Fault uh, is one of the large northeast accommodating structures in the region. And it, uh, from the, this area here, uh, goes through to uh, intersect the Mary Kathleen Shear at Mary Kathleen. That's a nice example of uh, uh, surface specimens that you uh, can see at sunset. So it's got an outer a malachite and chrysocolla stone and then chalcosite and then going inwards to a chalcopyrite core. It's very nice. So east of uh, Black Rock, Black Rock in this uh, view is over in this area. So we're going across the Rosebud Syncline, going east, and we come to the Jubilee Copper Deposit. Uh, Mary Kathleen is in the distance, uh, just around the corner from where my mouse is. And these hills over in the eastern side of Mary Kathleen, uh, that's the, the Coppany Prospect. So Coppany last year, uh, Hammer received a CEI um, to uh, put a few holes into a rear of common bearing scarn on the eastern side of the Mary Kathleen. Um, both holes intersected uh, uh, good uh, widths of lanthanum and cerium rich uh, um, mineralisation. Um, those elements were associated with alanite. Uh, definitely the zone is not fully tested. Uh, it's at least uh, 200 metres wide. Uh, interestingly, on the western side of the rare element bearing zone, there is a series of uh, uh, EM anomalies, and those EM anomalies are definitely associated with pyrotite. Uh, Mount Ice and Mines drilled a few of those uh, prior to Hammer getting into the JV, but there's uh, definitely still some uh, VTEM anomalies there that haven't been tested. So this diagram here on the right, it shows the copper uh, geochemistry uh, within uh, Mount Frosty JV area. So you can see the trend of the soil anomalies and it's uh, going around the corner and pointing at Mary Kathleen. And it goes out of our tenement area and then comes back in further to the north and you still uh, see the uh, copper anomalies in the soils. So it's, it's a large area. Um, there's few holes into it at this point, especially in the southern portion of the area. Uh, definite upside for Hammer. This is an example of some of the rare earth uh, uh, bearing material. So basically it's pyrops and scarn. The black mineral here is alanite, and alanite contains the uh, white rare earths. And the bottom panel there shows some of the sulfide occurrences. Dominantly pyrotite with chalk pyrite, and it definitely lights up uh, with VM. So going back down into the southern target zone around the Mount Foot Breccia, uh, Hammer's done a lot of work in here over the last few years. Uh, we've dated uh, the Breccia body. We've also dated some of the uh, intrusives related to the butcher, uh, and all of those dates have come back in the vicinity of 1,500 uh, million years, uh, which was a bit of a surprise to us because we thought the uh, butcher would be older. Um, this diagram uh, here shows some of the rock chips in the region. Um, of particular interest to Hammer and the joint venture, Jogmec joint venture, is this trend here, which is a shadow trend. So we've got over five uh, kilometres there of strike length, where we see uh, a quartz magnetite alteration zone, um, quite commonly associated with breccia, and definitely associated with elevated rock chips, elevated uh, 
copper and gold in the rock chips and elevated uh, copper soil geochemistry. And that uh, diagram at the left there shows the magnetic response with uh, the rock chip distribution as of probably six months ago. So you can see that uh, the magnetic ridge, uh, which is related to uh, the magnetite alteration at shadow, continues further to the south. Um, Hammer is, uh, or, or the joint venture rather, has drilled four holes at shadow, but no holes further, further long strike. So that's what we'll be looking at doing um, in late 2021. And as I've said in the previous slide, uh, the shadow trend goes down this drainage and to the south, another four kilometres. So basically, shadow was discovered through ground follow-up of uh, 190 ppm portable XRF, copper soil anomaly. And the person who followed it up went down into the, into the drainage here, just around where this white precipitate is present, and they found sulphide uh, in the base of the creek. And that really got, caught our attention. Um, we got Nick Tate, um, a Queenslander, formerly at, at certain times. Uh, he mapped the area. Uh, delineated a breccia body and the uh, magnetite alteration associated with it. And then we got him to look along strike and he was able to track that over five kilometres. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So basically we drilled uh, in the area where we first discovered the breccia body at Shadow proper. And the drilling um, delineated wide zones of low-grade copper mineralisation. Um, we're hoping to go back in there and look along the strike. And this is some of the, the left um, photo there just shows an example of some of the mineralisation that uh, shadow, um, you know, just, just underneath a thin weathered skin. And you can, you can see that beautiful sulphide. And this is some of Nick's mapping here. We've got the... This portion of the diagram is the shadow breccia. Uh, the solid red is uh, what Nick has termed a quartz magnetite rock. Uh, there, that's the location of the first two holes into that system. And again, this, this uh, situation continues further south. That's a section through the breccia body. So that was our first hole. Um, we intersected 83 metres of 0.13% copper. An example of mineralisation as well, sitting in the, the left uh, uh, photo shows uh, dominantly um, chalk pyrite mineralisation uh, sitting in an albertised rock. Uh, this, it's quite interesting with the sulphides. Um, they are... Uh, probably 95% charcoal. It's a very pure um, type of mineralisation. We don't really see that too often. So this is uh, back around to Kalman. So you can see uh, that's uh, the centre of the Kalman deposit looking north. Uh, the Pilgrim Faults located over to the east here. And seven kilometres away, where my uh, mouse is located, that's China Wall, which is sitting on the Pilgrim Fault. So the Pilgrim Fault made areas dipping to the west. Um, and so Kalman also is a uh, vertical steep west dip. So for those of you who don't know uh, Kalman at all, it's one of the few molyneum deposits uh, uh, in the Mount Isa Inlay, and certainly quite unique. It's definitely got open pit and underground potential. Uh, the, the deposit remains open, long strike, and we've certainly been able to um, see some quite high-grade intersections. Um, for instance, 7.7 uh, .7 metres at 23 point. 
4% was a real standout. Uh, that's located in the southern portion of Kalman at depth. Uh, elsewhere, got some very nice uh, intersections like 53 metres of 2.1% copper. So currently, uh, Hammer's uh, undertaking targeting studies. The aim is uh, to try and uh, find some higher grade um, mineralisation either within uh, the resource envelope or at shallow depths along strike. So in 2020, um, Hammer conducted an MT survey. It was a CEI grant. Uh, one of the traverses crossed the Kalman deposit. And it was quite interesting, the southern profile identified the Kalman structure, um, but certainly um, we got the biggest response uh, from the Kalman West uh, shear zone, which is located 500 metres to the west of Kalman. Um, we're uh, in the current drilling program, we aim to try and test that unexplained conductor at a shallow depth. So those uh, images show both profiles. Uh, the north profile is located across the northern portion of the Mount Fork Breccia. Uh, the southern profile goes through Kalman, across the Kalman West structure, and then across the Ballara Fault. So this is uh, the profile of interest. You can see the Pilgrim model position of the Pilgrim Fault based on their information. Uh, the location of the Kalman resource. Just here we've got the model position of the Blara Fault. And we did see um, the MT pick up Kalman, uh, but the response was not as strong as a nearby uh, response underneath the Kalman West Shear. And that response goes to depth. Um, that's uh, six uh, kilometres down. So we're going to be look, looking uh, to drill the very top of this feature uh, with a deeper RC hole. We'll probably get there in a week or two. <clears throat> and so this is the uh, last area I'll talk about. Uh, it's the Melbourne area. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's located in the east, far east of the project area. Um, we've uh, recently conducted some work um, across this zone. So basically what we're seeing here, um, the prospect is located in uh, um, basaltic um, metavolcanics and also metasediments on the northern margin of the Williams Fault. What we see in magnetics is a lot of structures uh, horsetailing off the margin of the, the uh, Williams granite and coming up into this area. And we do see where these structures intersect other north-south uh, structures, uh, we get shoot development. And these uh, shoots can be quite elevated in cobalt, uh, also copper and gold. And we see the situation repeating all over the project area in this, this area. Uh, that's uh, this uh, diagram of the soil. Um, geochemistry and one of the trends of the trend that I've just showed you in the previous slide it's located in this area so we've got the Charlotte trend which is east-west got the Alice Kings trend north-south where they intersect we've got quite a high um, soil cobalt response also mimicked with the copper and iron and it's quite interesting in this area. We've uh, recently uh, um, picked up some rock chips uh, further to the south of Charlotte, and we're, we're getting some gold grades there in excess of uh, 10 grams per tonne. So we really need to understand this a bit more, and hopefully uh, it will be drilled soon. Okay, so what's next uh, for Hammer? during this field season. So in terms of the JOGMAC JV, uh, we're currently doing follow-up RC drilling at Trafalgar. 
Um, a bit of complexity in relation to the JV. Um, JogMEC received multiple approaches uh, from um, Japanese companies and they to decide to put the JV up for tender. Uh, that's a, that essentially fulfills their main aim uh, as a, a, uh, a government body. Um, so we're, we're going through the tender process at the moment. Uh, we hope uh, it's uh, finalised soon so we can get back in now with uh, larger programs. So, yeah, that being said, I hope that we do uh, more detailed work there this year. So in terms of 100% hammer uh, work, we're currently in the middle of an RC uh, drilling program. We're hitting a number of targets like you, Lady Rose, Overlander, Serendipity, Kings, Alice and Charlotte, some of which I talked about in this presentation. Uh, we're also uh, seriously looking at Black Rock and Sunset and making a decision whether to embark on a, a drilling program uh, to attempt to define a drop resource of those prospects. And we're doing follow-up follow -up drilling after this initial 3,000 metres. So we'll be going back into these uh, uh, prospects where we've got good intersections in the first program, uh, but we'll also be doing some drilling at other prospects such as Tiny Boot, Smoko Gossam, and definitely some targets near Calum. Um, in the southern portion of the project area, we're going to be uh, uh, taking a serious look at Tick Hill. Uh, we've recently uh, done a lot of soils down that area, so we're going to be uh, looking to do some geophysical uh, surveys down there and also geological mapping. So it's going to be a fairly busy remainder of the year. So thank you very much. Thanks very much, uh, Mark. Excellent talk. Um, as uh, people furiously type their questions, no doubt, I'll uh, get some proceedings going. Uh, you, the um, rare earths that uh, you mentioned there, how do they fit into the, the picture? Are they part of the IOCG continuum or uh, are they something completely different? Um, I'm not quite too sure, um, Peter. It's <laughs> definitely on the... On the west side of the rare earth bearing zone, there's uh, accumulations of uh, pyrotide and copper in discrete um, bodies along a definite trend. But we're just not too sure how the rare earths fit into that picture. Um, certainly at Mary Kathleen, there is a copper association there, um, but we haven't seen any timing relationships between the rare earths and the copper at this point. Okay, and, and uh, so do you think they're the same dates as Mary Kathleen or are they something different to Mary Kathleen itself again? Yeah, I think they're definitely associated with Mary Kathleen, just looking at the, the way everything's trending. Um, it trends up up to the north then disappears off the, the tenement area then comes back in. Um, so it's definitely associated with Mary Kathleen. Um, but you know, we're not seeing uh, elevated uranium associated with this rare earth zone. So. So it's a bit odd. Um, but we do also see light rare earths at um, Jubilee, third to the south, and uh, in Trafalgar. Definitely um, in association with the ICG system, such as Overlander, Scalp, and Mendes Hill. So it's it's part of the it's part of the picture, that's for sure. Yep. And and uh, with the uranium and the ICGs, do you see that? Association at all, or is that low level uranium? Uranium. No, we don't tend to see uranium associated with the ISCG systems. Um, certainly not uh, overly into Andy Hill and Scalper. Um, no. Yeah. So we're pretty lucky in that respect. <laughs> 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 yeah, makes space permitting a little bit easier. A uh, question from uh, Philip Thomas. Uh, I know you did mention there were some sulphides in one of the creeks, but uh, how deep is the oxide zone? Um, and with the exception of the, the creek, is there much sulphide seen on surface elsewhere? Quite well, at, at Shadow, um, we'd, when we're putting an RC drill hole in, we'd be getting into fresh rock at 10 metres. So then at, at below 
a low uh, three metres, you'd call it uh, um, weekly weather. So we're not, we haven't got much for monoxide zone whatsoever. Um, at Kalman, uh, sorry, at Hammer Time, which is uh, in the Kalman sort of target region, uh, we also see sulphides. It's just like they're preserved um, under a under a thin weathered skin on rock chip samples. You'll you'll crack them and you'll get you'll get sulphide for sure. Um, so the depth of weathering is very shallow. So does that have a flow-on effect for your um, dispersion of soils? Or is it really tight or are you still finding that that's dispersed quite well? I think the topography plays a big role with the soil dispersion. Um, some of these areas are, are fairly rugged, or as we would say, undulating. Um, so we do get a big dispersion down slope. Um, but... Um, we are seeing that uh, the core of these soil anomalies is very tightly located on top of mineral oil soils. Yeah. And uh, just as a general expression of the question, I guess, you've got a, a wealth of prospects and targets and, and a very, very big um, project area. Um, how, how do you go about and how does Hammer go about uh, prioritising your targets for the field season, given that everyone has a limited budget, unfortunately? Yeah, um, well, we've we sort of divided up the area. Like, I, um, I don't know if I, I gave that impression during the presentation, but we've got certain trends that we're looking along um, and also certain areas located within JVs. So we sort of, we prioritise that way. So we've got an ISCG, an ISCG zone from Trafalgar going up towards Jubilee. Um, we'll be looking at ranking targets along that, as opposed to certain other trends. Uh, so the, in the northern area, we've got an IACG uh, trend there. Um, so we'll be concentrating on two areas along that trend. It still adds up to a, a lot of um, targets, I suppose. We just have to... I suppose we have to hit as many with drilling um, as possible. And then maybe the results dictate how we progress. So, um, but definitely within the JVs, we uh, rank those targets and and discuss the where we're going to go in, in a lot of detail. Yeah, thank you. Uh, question from uh, Oxygen. I'm not sure who that who Oxygen is. Uh, for the light rare earths, what are the typical lanthanum and serum, uh, serum PPM ranges? Uh, can be so, for instance, uh, at Trafalgar, it was up to 0.7% um, combined, less than the serum. Um, at Andy's Hill, we're getting over a percent. Um, for the Cockney rare earth uh, zone, um, those levels uh, are at over a percent in places. Okay, quite high. A um, uh, question from Simon Hitchman. Is there a preferred soil fraction over others um, that highlights soil anomalies? Is the same, or is it the same for all areas? Um, we haven't done a lot of uh, fraction discrimination or testing. Um, we typically use minus 80 for the 80 mesh for the bulk of our soils. Um, if we are working in an area that's got uh, some cover or on, in an area that's got topographic relief, uh, we'll use a partial leach, like a minus two mil partial leach. Um, but we haven't really done many studies to try and discriminate whether the minus eight is the best fraction to use. Okay. okay. So that, and uh, I, I guess unless another question pops in, I'll... Uh, I'll probably show my ignorance here, having never worked in Mount Isa District. Um, I, I know, obviously, a lot has changed in, in exploration in that part of the world, and there's been a lot of money thrown in by the governments and, and, and uh, the universities and research uh, Mount Isa. And to that end, do you, is Hammer seeing a change in, in perhaps what Hammer does or other workers do in that part of the world as to how you explore or how you target? Or is it uh, pretty much the same old um, best prospecting tools of mapping, soil sampling and drilling? 
um, for us in our project area, we've got, uh, for the most part, very good outcrop. So soil geochemistry and mapping is still uh, our main tool. Uh, we are using you know, gravity magnetics and IP and EM where appropriate, but it really comes back for most of our project area to what we can see on surface. Um, I know that the, the government in a lot of their funding is uh, um, looking to uh, fund projects that maybe uh, may have a lot more cover. And that's a really good, uh, a good thing to do. Um, but for us, uh, things haven't changed a lot. We're just trying to do them better. Yeah. And have the changes in the models, exploration models, uh, made a difference to your thinking? Or is it, uh, um, again, persisting with what you know best and what works best for your project? Well, things seem to evolve with what, um, with what we're seeing in the drilling. So definitely uh, we're looking uh, with a lot more seriousness at uh, ISCG possibilities, um, especially in the northern portion of the project there. Um, in relation to the other areas, uh, perhaps we're going away from utilisation of IP because um, that it seems to it seems to give us a lot of false targets, especially in areas where we've got magnetite alteration. Um, we can have lots of screaming IP anomalies, but um, they're really delineating magnetite alteration. But I, su I suppose we just have to keep <laughs> um, keep testing in that manner because sooner or later, one of those damn anomalies will be uh, something we're after. Um, I'm sure everyone listening would have come across that problem. Um, but, yeah, maybe we, I think we're starting to get a bit smarter in how we're utilising um, gravity and magnetics and not necessarily just going for the core of gravity highs and the core of mag highs. We're starting to look at the relationship between them. Uh, you know. Fantastic. Thanks, Mark. Um, final question goes to Doug Young. Um, I think he's looking rather hopeful with this question, and uh, I'm sure we are all looking hopeful when we hear things like this. Um, do you have a production aim or are you going to toll treat locally? Um, I think what the, the aim of um, any company of our size must be to become a producer. I think, I think you have to go with that aim and you have to try and be successful enough to be able to build your own plant and, and uh, treat it yourself. I think that's got to be the goal. Um, whether that works out in practice over the long term um, is another thing, but that, that's our... We've talked about this as well, and that's got to be our goal. Otherwise, uh, you're, sort of, you're sort of copying out from the start, you know, so... Our aim is to mine a deposit ourselves and treat it ourselves. Absolutely. You've got to be in it to win it, I reckon. Yeah. Well, thanks very much, Mark. On behalf of the AIG and all the attendees, I'd like to thank you and uh, I hope everyone enjoyed it and, uh, and join us next month for the next technical talk. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks all. Good evening.